We want to hear John this morning, don't we? Because John is phenomenal. Let's look. I love this man. Come on up, John. I'm going to stay down here. Go down here? I'll yeah. bring it down for you, mate. Thanks, John. I'll hand it over to you. Morning, church. How are you all this morning? You're looking good. Thank you, Christmas. There's a lot going on, isn't there? Well, it's good to be here. Good to see all your lovely smiling faces. Um, turn to the person next to you and say congratulations. Come on, congratulations. Both sides, congratulations. Congratulations, everybody. And you want to know what you're congratulating each other for? I'll tell you when we finished. <laughs> Keep me up to remind me, will you? Uh, look, I'm gonna. I'm just going to share a word this morning, a word that God laid upon my heart, and um, something that uh, I believe that I've I've experienced myself over the years, and it's helped me uh, get to where I am today. And because uh, God is so good, and uh, I, I I have a love for the Word of God. The moment I got saved. Uh, God gave me a love for his word and I've always loved his word and what it does and how it does and what it does for, uh, for myself and I'll go through some of this as we go along and in Matthew 24 verse 35 if you, have your, if you have your Bibles now I'm reading from the New King James Version I'm not quite sure what version they're going to be showing but that's the version I'm working from Okay, so in Matthew 24 verse 35 it says heaven and earth will pass away but my word will not pass away so everything else is going to go but his word heaven and earth will pass away but my words will not pass away God we will pass away and um, God's word will come to pass in us but it will not pass away. And I've also written down here, it will endure forever. My goodness, does God's word have to endure in your life? You, you work with it and God works with it with you. All right. And um, I want to say, and we go to Galatians chapter, I'm going to look at a few scriptures this morning, but in Galatians chapter 1, verses 11 through to 12. Have you got that up there? For... I would have you know, brethren, that the gospel which was preached by me is not according to man. Not according to man. For I neither received it from man, nor was I taught it, but I received it through revelation of Jesus Christ. And that's where the word comes from. It comes by revelation. It comes by God just dropping things into our lives, into our hearts. God just touching us, speaking to us, and we have to have ears to hear what the Spirit is saying. And uh, when I was putting this word together by the Holy Spirit, it was a funny thing, you know, on, it was Wednesday, Thursday morning, two o'clock, Thursday morning, I woke up with a start. I woke up at two o'clock in the morning, and there was this figure standing right alongside my bed. It was a figure of a man just dressed in normal clothing. He was quiet, but he was mumbling. And I woke up at the start, and there was a thing right alongside my bed. I said, how dare you get out in Jesus' name. And I just brushed my hand across him, and he took off. And I thought, how dare you? Just because I want to get into the Word, just because I want to get in touch with the Holy Spirit, just because, they, you see, the enemy will try to stop you doing things, but in the power of the Word will come against the wiles and the trickeries of the enemy. So I got up at 2 o'clock in the morning, and I, I got rid of this person, whoever he was, and I started walking through the house and praying through the house again. Speaking in tongues and just filling the house with the Holy Spirit again. I mean, it's already filled with the Holy Spirit, but by goodness me, the enemy's pretty smart too. We've got to realize that. But it's the Word. See, every word that's written in the Bible was not from the thoughts of men, but from the voice of God. See, the Lord spoke it out and it happened. The Lord spoke everything into being and everything into reality. And everything he said, because we study the thoughts and the intents of the heart of God through his word. And in, uh, when you look at the book of Genesis, chapter 1, you always go back to Genesis when things go wrong. Genesis chapter 1, and he says, um, all through that first few verses of Genesis, God says, 
God said, God said, God said, God said. And when you read it further on, it came to pass. You see, God, when God speaks anything, he doesn't leave it hanging there. He doesn't leave you walking away and say, well, what was that all about? It wasn't sitting there. It was happening. See, when God speaks, things happen. It's things happen. It went forth. It never sleeps. It never rests. It never stops because it's eternal. It's eternal what it does. You see, it was hovering, brooding over the face of the earth, and the Holy Spirit was watching, covering, protecting, guarding the earth. His Holy Spirit is doing the same for you and I today. Zechariah 4, 6 says, It's not by might, nor by, but by my Come on, you can say it better than that. It's not by might and it's not by power, but it's by my spirit, saith the Lord. So when he says it's not by might nor by power, it's nothing that you can do. It's not by your sweat. It's not by your effort. It's not by your intellectual abilities. It's not by who you are, but it says by my spirit, saith the Lord. By my spirit. And it's the word that's in you that's going to come out with the spirit. Okay, Isaiah 55 and 11, and I, I love this word here, love what it says here, Isaiah 55 and 11, do we have it up? So would my word be which goes forth from my mouth, whose mouth? Say your name, come on, your mouth, you have the word, you have the word, is that right, you have the word? It's coming out of John's mouth. Coming out of whose mouth? mouth? Your mouth. It is. Hey, come on. So my so so will my word which goes forth from my mouth. It what it will not return to me empty without accomplishing that which I desire and without succeeding in the matter for which I sent it. So shall my word that goes forth from my mouth, it shall not to return unto me void, but it will accomplish what I please, and it shall prosper in the thing which I sent it. When God sends his word, he's going to prosper it. When God sends his word out of your mouth, he's going to prosper it. God will prosper his word because that's who God is. Everything we speak, everything we talk, when we speak into people's lives, it's going to prosper. It's going to happen. He agrees. Amen. It, not, it will not return empty. My goodness. And I'm so pleased about that because, you know, it's the power within us. And that's the word of God. He said, heaven and earth will pass away. But he said, the word that I put in you, he said, will not it will stay there. It will heap, it'll, it'll go. It, it, it creates. It will not return empty because it creates. It develops. It expands. It brings growth. It brings natural and spiritual growth. It changes our attitudes. It changes our nature. It changes our character. And it's very spiritual. It changes your thinking. God even tells us how to think. If you want to know how to think, look at uh, Philippians 4, chapter 4, verse 6. What does it say? Whatsoever things are Lovely, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are good report and a few other things. He says, think on these. Think on these. Do we think those every day? Ooh. It helps us with our thinking. You know, if you're walking around, you know, it's, it's not, let's be honest, sometimes I'm busy praying away there and I'm thinking about something else rather than prayer. And I think, so I lay my hands on my head and say, Lord, cleanse me of all this rubbish that's going on up here. <laughs> Speak into it. Speak into the word. And, you know, let's be honest, I'd be singing and worshiping and praising and in the lounge and sitting there and I'm thinking about the breakfast I just had, you know, or <laughs> my, my cup of tea. And I thought, oh, Lord. I want to concentrate on your presence. I want to concentrate on your word. So I lay hands on my head and impart. Fill it afresh with your spirit. Fill my word afresh and get rid of all the rubbish. And God does it. 
You know that? God does it. He restores. He brings restoration to relationships. If you're having problems in your relationship with your family, with your friends, with your husband, with your wives, with your children, with your sons, your daughters, if you're having problems with your relationship in your working situation or your neighborhood, hey, look at the Word of God. Restores. God restores. He says, love thy neighbor. That's simple, isn't it? Don't hate them, love them. I'd like to give them a kick sometime, but love them. Some things we think about them sometimes, but he says, love them. That's what the word says. Holy Spirit inspired. See, the word will do things for you. It'll, 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 it'll help, it'll heal. And it helped me through, um, through my life. You know, the, when, when God touched me with his word and the Holy Spirit, um, the word... Um, there are a lot of things that, that weren't said in the Word, but he said it through his Word to me through his Holy Spirit. And it was through the Word that I was able to stop smoking. That was one of the hardest ones. I was able to stop drinking. I was able to stop swearing. Boy, I used to swear something terrible. But now I swear by the truth. <laughs> Amen. Um. I was able to stop being a, um, a rat bag. I was able to stop doing a lot of things which I loved doing. There was the Word of God and the Holy Spirit that pulled me back. It helped me. It saved me. It restored. Um, I didn't need, well, I, I needed to restore what I was doing. And some things in the Word I don't like. There's some things in the Word I thought, oh, Lord, that hurts. You say, well, do it. And it won't hurt. The only time it hurts is when we don't obey it. That's what it hurts. You know, there's some things that there in the Word, I, I, um, I look at it and I cringe. I, I, I flick the pages over very quickly so I don't have to read it again. Um, but, I, but I obey it. Why? Because it's the truth and it's right. And I'll tell you what, when you obey the, Lord, the Word of God, you, you never go wrong. All right. So which changes our character and our thinking, which are the fruit of a spoken word. And it's written, see, God is looking for fruit. And fruit comes out of obedience to his word. And, you know, we often say, and I've said this many times, um, Lord, I'll, I'll obey your word till the day I die. And God will say to me, well, I want you to do this. I want you to go and love that person over there that you haven't spoken to for a long time because you don't like them. <laughs> oh, do I have to? <laughs> Be looking for fruit. Because when you go and do it, fruit comes out of that person's life. And that touches that person's life. So whenever God speaks to us, it's really a, our choice whether we allow it to work or reject it. If we reject it, God will speak to somebody else. And the classic example of the scribes, the Sadducees, and the Pharisees, they didn't receive Jesus in his teaching, but the word became flesh. It would dwell among them. So what he did, he spoke to the Gentiles instead. The Gentiles received his word, and the fruit came forth from the Gentiles. That's what changed the whole nations. Matthew 21, 43 says, Therefore I say unto you, the kingdom of God will be taken from you and given to a nation bearing the fruits of it. By their fruits you shall know them. And you know, that's quite challenging. By their fruits. See, when God moves by his spirit, he wants to see fruit from it. He does. When you speak into someone's life, God's expecting to see fruit. I remember... I remember when we were, um, I was on one of my trips over in India. I took two guys with me, the three of us, and uh, we were there for, a, oh, I don't know, three or four weeks, through India, traveling through India and ministering in churches. We ministered to a lot of churches. And um, I remember one, one of the, we must have been here about two or three weeks by this time, and we were, the three of us happened to be in one church at the same time. And it was quite a large area. And uh, the pastor got up, and he, he said, we have these men from New Zealand, these great and powerful men from New Zealand. He said, they come with a word. They come with the Holy Spirit. They've come with signs and wonders and miracles. And all these things are happening. They're coming with the prophetic. 
and I'm there, and I'm sitting there, I'm looking at my two mates, we're like looking at each other, and say, who are they talking about, you know? <laughs> but, and so, so we just got up, and we just did what we have to do, and it was about three or four weeks later, when we come back to New Zealand, that we heard that exactly what he said was happening, but we didn't know. But that's all right. You see, signs and wonders will follow them that believe. And when you start to minister and preach under the anointing power of the Holy Spirit, God does what he wants to do. It. He will prosper it according to his word. He will prosper it where how he wants to prosper it. And, he doesn't, and we don't always get to see it. See, it's not about us wanting to see what's happening, what's going on. It's about us knowing what God is doing in our lives, what God is doing with us. And uh, he's doing a good thing. Amen? doing a good thing. When I look around here, I say, God's doing a good thing. He's doing a great thing. But God speaks to us. See, when God moves by his spirit, he, he does want to see fruit from it, but not always we see it. See, when we pray, we, when we pray over people's lives, often we look for the, we, we don't look at, we look for the manifestations rather than the experience of what God is doing. Because, you know, when we, when we lay hands on people and pray for them, you know, I'm going I'm to use Jerome. Come on, Jerome. Because I know him, he knows me. See, as we, as we pray for people and lay hands on them and say, Lord, bless this man. Touch him afresh. Release him into the anointing. Release him to what you have for his life. Release him now, right now, Lord. Fill him afresh. Give him the power and the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Now, look what God is doing. We're not going to look at the manifestation of the Holy Spirit, what He is doing. And that's what we, and that's what I fell into the trap of quite a while ago, a few years ago now. I was looking for what was, I was looking for the people jumping around and laughing. I was, I was looking, if they're not doing that, oh, I'm not praying right. <laughs> you know, am I doing it wrong? Am I not praying under the anointing? Hey, do it. Do it. Speak the word. I'll show you. Speak the word. Declare the word. See, he, he, he spoke into people's lives. It's, it's our responses. We're all different. We all have different reactions. But God is drawing us. He's ministering to us. We have focus on the Lord because God's ways and reactions are different to our ways because his ways are higher than our ways. And our ways are not his ways. His ways are We've got to conform to his ways. That's why the word, he said the word will come to pass in our lives. We're going to pass away, but his word will carry on. It will still, still be working in your life. Is that right? See, when you, yeah, I liken it to um, when you microwave something, you put it in the microwave and you microwave it, three, four minutes, whatever it is, you take it out. You're not supposed to eat it straight away, are you? Because it's still cooking. Is that right? It's still, ladies, is that right? Is that right? I'm, not a, I'm not a professional cook, but it's still cooking, it's still working, it's still moving until it's actually finished. That's like the Word of God. When God speaks into your life, hey, it's working, it's moving, it's cooking, it's working, it's doing things. And out of that, it's in, and out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth will speak. Out of the abundance will come forth. That's the fruit that's going to come out of what God is doing. All right, let me have a look at this here. Here, let's, uh, let's just go to Ezekiel 37. Let's look at something here, shall we? Just going to bring a little bit. It's about the dry bones, Ezekiel 37. Shall we? I'm going to go to it in my Bible. And it's all about the, what, what, uh, it's a tremendous piece of scripture, this. And I want to line it up with, um, with another piece of scripture, which I'm not, which I haven't got up there, but I encourage you to have a look at it. Ezekiel 37, and he's talking about when he took the prophet Ezekiel into the valley of the dry bones. And he said in verse 1, he said, Then the hand of the Lord came upon me and brought me out into the spirit of the Lord and set me down in the midst of the valley of it was full of bones. Then he caused me to pass by them all around, and behold, there were very many in an open valley, and indeed they were very dry. And he said to me, Son of man, can these bones live? So I answered, O Lord, you know, you know, you know, you know. So he's asking, do you know? 
Do you know they can live? So he says here, first time, number one, he said, and again he said to me, prophesy. So when you prophesy, you're speaking the word. So he says here, speak the word. So he said, prophesy to these bones and say to them, O dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. If you've met a person anywhere, anytime who's feeling dry, speak to the bones. Speak to them, all right? Let's go on. And again he said to me, uh, and thus that's said the Lord God to these bones, surely I will cause breath to enter into you. You shall live, bring flesh upon you, cover you with skin, put breath in you and you shall live and you shall know that I am the Lord because he spoke the word. Life, life, life was coming. So verse seven, so I prophesied as I was commanded. See, when God commands you to do it, don't stand there and say, oh, I don't know what to say. I'm not quite sure. Hey, you've got the word of God in you. Prophesy, speak it out, declare it. Speak your word. So he prophesied. He handed, and I prophesied. There was a noise. Oh, great. And suddenly, rattling of the bones came together, bone to bone. Oh, that must have been quite a sound. Must have been pretty loose bones out there. There's a lot of loose people out there that do need their bones putting back together again. There's a lot of loose people out there that do need their sinews and breath put into them. There's a lot of loose people out there who are going nowhere because they're loose. You have the word of God to bring bone upon bone. You've got to prophesy. So here we go. Here we go. Indeed, I look, indeed as I looked, the sinews and skin, the flesh came upon them. Skin covered them. There was no breath in them. Hallelujah. No breath. Plenty of bones, plenty of sinews, plenty of muscles going on, but no breath. And he also he said to me, prophesy to the breath. Speak to the wind. Prophesy, son of man, and say to the breath, thus says the Lord God, come out from the four winds of breath and breathe on them, these slain, that they may live. Hallelujah. Hey, can you see what power you've got? Can you see what authority you have? Oh, you're not nodding very well, are you? Come on. Come on. You've all been congratulated. I'll tell you why. Shortly. And then he says here, in verse 10, he says, so I prophesied. He was being obedient to the Lord. I spoke the word. I prophesied and he commanded me, as he commanded me, and breath came into them. And they lived and stood upon their feet, an exceedingly great army. Hey, we're a great army. You and I are a great army. And there's a lot of people out there that need to be in this army. Hallelujah. There's a lot of people out there that need that dynamic encounter with Jesus Christ to be in the army of God, to be set free, to be released. You and I have the ability to do that. You and I have the ability to stand, speak and declare the word. When we finish today, I'm going to pray for people. I know you've had a line up here, but I'm going to do what God has told me to do. And uh, whether one or two come up, it doesn't matter. I'm going to be obedient to the Lord. I'm going to be obedient to his word. And God's going to do it. And where was I? And he said to me, son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel. The whole house. They indeed say our bones are dry. Our hope is lost. But we ourselves are cut off. Therefore, he said, prophesy. Prophesy and say to them, thus says the Lord God, behold, O my people, I will open your graves and cause you to come out up from the graves and bring you out into the land of Israel. Woo-hoo! What an amazing story that is. And when you line that up, there's, a, there's, a, there's another piece in Exodus chapter 6. When you line that up, there's the seven I wills of God and the seven words here that prophetic, so there's seven times seven. And every time you begin to speak, he said, God says, I will. When you prophesy, when you speak the word, God says, I will. Exodus 6, you look it up. I haven't got it up up here. Therefore prophesy to them. You speak to it because it creates. It brings people out of captivity. It sets them free. God will set them free. You have the ability to set people free. You have the ability to set yourself free. If no one's praying for you to set yourself free, don't wait for somebody to come. Lay hands on yourself. Come on. Speak word in there. Lord, I'm healed in the name of Jesus. 
I'm released in the name of Jesus. I'm full of the Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus. Lay hands on your head if you have to. Lay hands on your knees, your back, your legs. Wherever it's not well, heal it. Speak to it. Prophesy to it. Use the word of God. By your stripes I am healed. You sent your word to heal. Well, I'm getting waylaid here. But listen, you know, and when he says in, in the seven I, the seven prophetic utterances here of God that brings life, and the seven I wills of God line up with Galatians chapter one where we started from. I heard it by the Spirit of God, not by man, but by his Spirit. Alrighty. He spoke to the storms, and they were still peace. He spoke to the fish and came forth in abundance, prosperity. He spoke to the water and turned into wine, which was joy. His word will encompass that which pleases the Lord. He said it will not come back empty. I promise you that every time God speaks, a seed is sown. When a seed is sown, seed has to take conception. It's conceived within us. And don't get me wrong, ladies. Don't get me wrong here. Every time God speaks to see that it comes, it eventually takes place in the spirit. God spoke to Zacharias and said, your wife Elizabeth will get pregnant and have a boy and his name will be called John. Hallelujah. They were old and barren, but he said the word. He spoke his word into the dry bones, into the dry womb. He spoke his word and she got pregnant. I'm not saying ladies, you're not old and dried up. Even those that are, think you're older and dried up, no, God's not going to speak a word and you get pregnant now, your age. I don't think that's going to happen. But it happened. It happened with Mary. Never, see, we're never too old and barren when God speaks. Remember that. And I'm talking about, you think you might get, you're never too old and barren inside to receive the word of the Lord by the power of the Spirit. You're never too old. They're right, Beresford. We're never too old. I'm coming up 75, and I'm not too old. I'm not, I'm not barren either. Woo! I'm full of the fruit and the Holy Spirit anointing. We keep on going, don't we, Kieran? It doesn't matter how old we get. People say, well, I'm getting too old. I said, fooey, any Chinese here? No, well, three Chinese cheers for that. Fooey, fooey, fooey. I don't offend anybody. But yeah, you're never too old. Never too old and barren to receive the word of God. If you've, if, if you've got barren, then you need to look at yourself. Don't look at anybody else. Look at yourself. What's, done, what's happening here? See, never too old for that. See, the mother of Jesus, what a, a tremendous Mary who was the mother of Jesus. God come and he spoke into her life. You, she was a virgin. You'll become pregnant with my son, Jesus. Elizabeth was six months into her pregnancy. Mary went to visit her, spoke to her, and all of a sudden the baby left in the womb. And when she spoke into Mary's life, that she got filled with the Holy Spirit. That means John the Baptist was filled with the Holy Spirit because God spoke it into being. She spoke it into being, and that is powerful. See, the Holy Spirit fills us, it refreshes us, it heals us, teaches us, and directs us. That's what the Word of God does in the Spirit. Because when we, when, we, when we worship and pray, we're praying under the authority of the Word. That's how I see it anyway. You know, we sing the Word, we sing the presence, and we love it. I enjoy it, I love it. God spoke it into reality. That's our authority. God has given you authority. Did you know that? You have full authority in the word of God to minister that word. See, everywhere that Jesus went, everyone who heard him said he spoke with authority. Even after Jesus' death and resurrection, the disciples carried on the work in, at a greater level. So we were at a greater level. Did you know that? You're at a greater level. Not that here. You're at a greater level of carrying on his word, carrying on his presence. Even after that, even, even then, the, she said, these disciples who were men, not educated or wise, or un they, these were fishermen. They were unlearned, uneducated men. But when the Lord spoke to them, 
They spoke with authority. They spoke with power. They spoke under the anointing of the Holy Ghost. They spoke the word. See, the spoken word is very powerful. You know, the Old Testament, there's a lot of instances in the Old Testament. We look at the prophets, Elijah, Elisha, Moses, and all the prophets, they, they, they spoke with authority. See, there's nothing new under the sun. And one of the men that I love in the New Testament most of all was Peter. Peter, um, he, I guess I, I, I can identify with Peter because he, he says things and makes a mistake. He's made a few mistakes and uh, I've said things, I made a few mistakes myself. I've said things I shouldn't have said. But you see, God teaches us to be positive. Positive with what comes out. Positive with our attitude of how it comes out. He wants you to be strong, positive with his word. And let's have a look at a couple of things here before I finish off. Ooh. In, um, in the book of Acts... Chapter 10, let's go over there, book of Acts chapter 10. Once I can find it, you got it up there? Acts chapter 10. I've got Acts for a few pages over here. Now Peter was, he was in the house of, uh, where is he? Chapter 10, he was in the house of Cornelius. And he was talking to the house. He was preaching to Cornelius' household. And he was just sharing the word of God with them, just ministering to them and just sharing. And uh, he, you, you'll see it from verse 34 to 43, which I'm not going to read that. But he was witnessing to them. Now look, look, look at this here. In, Acts, in verse 44, he, it says here, While Peter was still speaking these words, the Holy Spirit fell upon all those who heard the word. And those of the circumcision who believed were astonished, as many had came to Peter because the gift of the Holy Spirit had been poured out on the Gentiles also. For they heard them speak with tongues and magnify God. Then Peter answered, Can anyone forbid water that these should not be baptized who have received the Holy Spirit just as we have? And he commanded them to be baptized in the name of the Lord. Then they asked him to stay a few days. Why? Because he spoke the word. They were filled with the Holy Spirit. And that's the power and the authority of the word that you have in your life. Don't look at it as, a, as just a, a thing or word of God, but look at it as something that's precious that you have within you. We'll look at that shortly. And in Acts chapter 3, we're not going not gonna to look at all these scriptures, but there's a whole lot there uh, on Acts chapter 3 where Peter was going up to the temple to pray. Uh, verse 1, now Peter and John went up together to the temple of the hour of prayer, the ninth hour, which is between 3 o'clock and 6 o'clock in the afternoon. And there was a certain man lame from his mother's wombs, and he was standing, he was sitting there uh, asking for alms. In verse 3, he was seeing Peter and John about to go in the temple, ask for alms. But he said, but Peter, he fixed his eyes on him. He says, now look at me. Look at me. Isn't it, isn't, this is something I've noticed over the years is that when, when you want to pray for somebody who hasn't given their life to Jesus, or when you pray for somebody who's fairly new Christians, when you want to pray for somebody, isn't it amazing how they can't look you in the eye? They, they turn their head away. You know, because they, the sin that's in them is convicting them when they see the glory in you. When they see the word that's coming out of you. So when they, when they see you, so, so he looked at, so Peter, he fixed his eyes on him. And this guy fixed his eyes back and he says, I'm going to get something here. He got something, all right. Peter said, silver and gold I don't have. He said, anything that I have is not of my own effort. It's not of my own sweat. It's not of my own doing. Everything that I have, he says, I don't have any money. I don't have intellect. I don't have natural abilities. I don't have any of that. And that's what he was declaring here. I have silver and gold. I have none. Nothing of the world I have to give away. Nothing. And he says here, uh, where is it? Where am I? Um, silver and gold I have none. But what I do have, I give you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Rise up and walk. 
That's the authority of your word. That's the power that Peter had. That's what he was showing. That's what he was declaring. And you and I, hey folks, we have the same church. We have the same authority. We have the same power. It's not just for the disciples. It's not just for those in the book of Acts. It is for you and I today. And God is saying, prophesy, speak to the life, speak to the people, speak to those that need to hear it. In, uh, in, Acts 6, in Matthew 16, verse 13, this is Peter, Peter confessing Jesus as the Christ. In verse 13, when Jesus came into the nation of Caesarea, Philippi, he asked his disciples saying, who do men say that I, the son of man, am? And they said, some say John the Baptist, some Elijah, and others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. But he said to them, but who do you say that I am? Simon Peter answered and said, You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. Jesus answered and said to him, Blessed are you, Simon by Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you. There's that flesh and has not revealed it, but by my Father who is in heaven. Revelation of the word. Galatians, by the Spirit of God. There's that word again, all right? And he says, um, And I say, and I also say to you that you are Peter and upon this rock I will build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. He says upon this rock, that word rock means revelation. Upon this revelation I will build my church. God brings revelation to you as you move out in the word of God. God brings revelation to you by the power of the Holy Spirit and all he's asking you to do is obey. It's quite simple, isn't it? Well, it sounds simple. But you think to yourself, it's not quite that simple, John. <laughs> See, victorious against the authority. It's the authority in the Word of God. I was, um, I remember, oh gosh, I remember a few, uh, a few years ago, one of my friends uh, from Whangarei, great man of God in the church up there, known him for years. Well, unfortunately, he got cancer. So he came down to the Auckland Hospital. His wife rang us up and said, um, hey, we'd come and see Ben. We'd come and pray for him. So we did. So my wife and I went in, and I had my word. I took, I took my Bible with me, and we went in. We found him, and then we had a good chat, talked there, and I started to pray for him. So I prayed, and I prayed, and I prayed. My wife prayed, and I prayed, and I pulled out my Bible. I can't remember the scriptures I had, but I spoke these scriptures. I just spoke scripture, 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 and began to speak the words. And we were there a good hour, or maybe two hours, but just great ministering to him. Anyway, um, we left, and uh, he, he, unfortunately, he eventually died a lot longer than it was supposed to. So he, had, he got a few more years to his life. And um, his wife rang us up about, oh, a couple of months later, and we just said, yeah, how is he? What's going on? She said, look, I thought I'd just give you a ring and tell you this. I said, what happened? He said, well, when you were praying for Ben and you were reading the Word of God, he said there was a, there was a Chinese gentleman in the bed opposite. And he said, this man, he said, he nearly jumped out of his bed because he was hearing the Word, he was hearing the prayers, and he was getting healed. He was getting touched by the power of God. We didn't know this. But apparently after that, he got saved. Power of the word. You see, you never know what God is going to do. He said he will prosper that which he sends it to do. And I remember we were on a, a mission trip, or well, a preaching trip over in Australia, over in Western Australia, and it's this huge expense. And I finished preaching a, a message one Sunday, um, one Sunday morning, and I'd finished that message, and we had to, and I, I got back to the house where we were staying, and I laid down because I wasn't feeling too well. And I laid down, and... Um, we had to travel another 200 k's to get to the next place to, pre to preach that night. And so I laid down, I laid down, I couldn't get up. I was crook as a dog, I was sick as. Just couldn't get up, my head couldn't get up. I said, what? I said, Lord. And so my wife, bless her heart, she comes in, she opens the word, she says, right. And she started speaking the word. She started declaring the word and she started praying in the Holy Ghost. And I'll tell you what, five minutes later, I was up ready to drive and go. See, the word of God does it. The Word of God ministers to it. The Word of God would always do it. All right, I'm nearly finished. You're going, phew, thank goodness for that. Um, I'll just skip a couple there. 
there's a, there's a scripture in Luke chapter 5. You'll, you'll read it there. But at the time that the disciples had gone out fishing all night and they'd caught nothing. You remember the story? They caught nothing. And then they come into shore and Jesus was on the shore and he says to them, get out there and chuck the line over this side, that side, throw it over there and get some fish. Peter says, hey, we've been out all night. We've caught nothing. There's nothing there. But what did he say? At thy word. Your word. Tired, worn out, all night fishing. If you're a fisherman, you've been out all night, coming to shore, nothing. You know how you're feeling. The last thing you want to do is go out again. They went out again, but your word. You see, the word gives direction. The word brings restoration. The word gives life. And the word touches. And the word moves sovereignly. All right, last scripture is Isaiah 53, verse 1. Do we have that one up there? Isaiah 53, verse 1. I'm going to line it up with John 12, 38. We have John 12, 38 very quickly after this. Who has believed our message? Who has believed our report? That's what I've got written. To whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? Who has believed our report? Do you believe the report of the Lord? That's the question. And in John, John, chapter, what is it? John chapter 12, verse 38, he says the same thing. This was to fill the word of Isaiah the prophet when he spoke. Lord, who has believed our report? And to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? The arm of the Lord has been revealed to you. The arm of the Lord has been given to you. The arm of the Lord. To whose report do you believe? I believe the report of the Lord. His report says, I am healed. His report says, I am saved. His report says, says, says. That's the report of the Lord. And that's the word of God. So here we go. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 7. We have this treasure, the Bible, in this earthen vessel, that the excellency may be of God and not of us. Congratulations. You have a treasure. Wave to me. You have a treasure. Come on, wave. You have a treasure. You have a treasure, an earthen vessel. That's the treasure that's the congratulations that we have. God has entrusted us with his word. He's entrusted us with his Holy Spirit. He's entrusted us with treasure. We're all looking for treasures. You've already got it. Looking for the treasures in earthen vessels that the excellency may be of God and not of us. Whose report do I believe? I believe the report of the Lord.